interesting and I would say very meaningful, especially for a group this size, where the sodium depleted group um, had significantly less insulin sensitivity. And let me just allow, let me say that again, just to help it really have an impact. We tell people, including type two diabetics who may have you know blossoming blood pressure, that they should cut their salt to control their blood pressure. This study suggests one, cutting the salt doesn't help the blood pressure at all. And two, an unintended consequence is that the person actually becomes more insulin resistant for no other reason than cutting their salt back in their diet. So you take the type two diabetic and now we're making their disease worse. Whatever medication they're on for their diabetes, they likely have to take more of it. They have to take more insulin if, they're, if they've been given insulin therapy, all because we've told them to cut their salt. Now, again, I'm not anyone's physician. None of us are. So I'm not giving dietary advice here. Um, but I am saying perhaps this is a study you'd want to print out and take to your next doctor's appointment um, if you've been told that you need to cut your salt. It may have less of a benefit than you think. And in fact, it may have a, a, a downside here, namely making the insulin resistance, which is the basis of your type 2 diabetes, um, even worse. Now, th just to end this study, the concluding thoughts, <clears throat> that we don't know the mechanism, but it could be part of, in other words, what is it about the low sodium diet that is causing the insulin resistance? It could be a result of an elevation in the hormones that are trying to tell the kidneys to keep the salt in the body. Like there's this system, for example, called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Um, we know that angiotensin has some, and aldosterone have some direct effects on insulin and insulin signaling, including at the fat cells. And so it could be that these salt sensitive hormones like aldosterone, when they're up, they're driving insulin to be up. We know the opposite can be the case. High insulin can push up aldosterone. And so it's likely that it's going the other direction as well. Also, although they didn't measure it in this study, the, the catecholamines like epinephrine or sometimes called adrenaline, those are um, uh, uh, anti-diuretic hormones. They tell the body, they signal the body to keep um, salt and water. And it could be that um, they'll, those are up, that epinephrine or adrenaline is up as it, once the person shifts to this low salt diet, basically the stress system, the sympathetic nervous system is telling the body, hey, we're not getting salt anymore. We've got to hold on to whatever we can. And when epinephrine goes up, epinephrine is an insulin antagonist among its many effects. It challenges what insulin's trying to do and thereby might be contributing to the insulin resistance that we see develop in the low salt group. So in the end, that's just some speculation to explain the mechanism. But the reality of the situation is our advice to cut salt, not our advice, the, the general, the dogmatic advice to cut salt may have these unintended consequences of making insulin resistance even worse than it was before.